believe that addressing the ownership of assets can help uh, to eradicate poverty. How do we do that and how does that work? People are distracted when they enter the poverty conversation or the inequality conversation by income disparity. And you would have heard people speak about what the the middle class earns versus what the poor earn, household income sure. and so on. I think it's a distracting symptom. The root of inequality is ownership of assets and non-ownership of assets. So we could fix that straight away, you and I. We could, if we were influential enough, um, talk to the top earning 10 million people in the world and say, will you all just take one dollar salary this year? But keep your assets. Yeah. Based on the measure, inequality would be sharply adjusted that year, right? The stats would tell us what a significant step forward, but you and I know nothing changed. Sure. Okay. So if we aren't concerned with building assets for the poorest, and there are different ways to do that. I'm not suggesting you give every poor person a piece of land, or you give every poor person a bank of shares. There's some market forces that are very, very hard to counter. And I'm not a communist, but I'm also not a hardcore capitalist. In fact, I may well best be described as a social capitalist. Because I believe in the principles of supply, demand, risk, return, and impact. Okay. Risk, return, and impact is vital, not just risk and return. So it could well be, and there's a wind farm we're invested in now in the Eastern Cape, and we strongly, strongly recommend that the trust that effectively owns a large chunk of the wind farm and its beneficiaries are the, some of the poorest people in the Eastern Cape, mm -hmm. that via this trust they own an asset. And if you professionalize the trust, I can't have ordinary people who've never looked at a balance sheet yeah. manage a trust, but they sure. can be beneficiaries. If you professionalize the trust with smart, often younger people mm -hmm. who will build this asset base for the community, the chances are you could get them out of poverty over time. Yeah. There's no quick yeah. fix. Yeah. But that's an example of okay. asset-based sustainability versus just distributing the dividends and giving everybody some kind of grant. Yeah. Give an able-bodied man crutches, you teach him how to limp. That's not what it's about. Mm. So if you want to eradicate poverty, one way is to see to what extent the poorest in the world could eventually own assets. And grants alone won't fix it. Grants are important, but they can be catalytic in helping to get poor people to a point where they own more. Okay. And that's actually better for global economy. It actually is better even for capitalism. Really? Yeah. Because more people have disposable income. Yeah. The wealthiest don't spend as much. Eventually they have everything they need and what they seek is peace and quiet sitting in an ashram <laughs> in India. Sure. They make terrible consumers. It makes sense for the global economy to have many more people have access to some money. Mm -hmm. And they want to improve their lives. If GDP is a measure, and I con I'm concerned about GDP as a measure anyway, I think yeah. it's limited. But that would mean a better global economy with more people having access to capital.